This show is for the sales leader who knows they have a pivotal role in driving outstanding sales results. Getting hired or promoted to manage a sales team is a big accomplishment, but you know you have to work hard to become a great sales leader. You are listening to the Divine Comedy of Sales podcast. Here's your host, coach, and advisor to elite sales leaders from around the world, Matt McDarvey. If you've been listening to, call it the last dozen or more episodes of this podcast, you'll know that we're placing a lot of emphasis on systems thinking, on diagnosis, all really critical parts of effective sales leadership, really leadership of any function. But since my zone of expertise is the sales function and sales leadership specifically, that's why I've really been honed in on what does it take to build, to assemble, and execute and follow through on a system, a system that leads to effective performance, the desired result, right? The business outcome that we want. And upon reflecting on what are the things that can get in the way, you know, the list is long. As I consider, you know, what are all the variables or the the reasons, I should say, that change is hard, or put another way, what are the most common barriers that really prevent sales leaders from effectively following through on their systems, driving change? Well, in no particular order, there's sort of the natural human resistance to change. There can be other reasons, cultural misalignment, insufficient resources, you know, change fatigue, maybe the next big change that we're proposing or the next big action to tune our system is coming on the heels of many, many other changes. So people are are fatigued. Poor planning is a biggie, right? Not really having a plan to drive commitment and change in behavior. Failure to engage the right people, key stakeholders, not just the folks in the C-suite who agree with the idea that we've got to make change, but the people who actually have to make the change. So in, our, in a sales organization, field sellers, sales operations, frontline managers, for example. So there's a lot of reasons for why we don't achieve success when we sort of commit to a system or if we change our system or approach to driving great results. And that's really what I want to talk about today, because I think there is kind of a, a hidden or a missing piece that if a sales leader, you, a frontline leader or a leader of leaders or a chief sales officer, if you were simply to do something that the the best sales leaders do, then I suspect we could probably work through and overcome some of those common barriers that I rattled off a minute or two ago. So the headline for this episode is, if you have a system, if you have a vision of your, your sales leadership operating system, the system by which you will drive your organization to function, whether it's five or 10 people or 500, that your system's success really hinges on your commitment to it. Put another way, if you want to achieve great results from your system, you must remain committed and of course help others to commit and retain their commitment to that system. Why do I say all this? Well, simply great leaders follow through really, really well. Average leaders don't follow through all that well. I know people who buy into the idea of having a system, but they consistently have difficulty following through. So what do you think happens to their system? It doesn't deliver the results that they intend. It loses enthusiasm. Other people seeing that you as an average leader haven't followed through effectively on the key elements of your system they recognize that and see, okay, well, I guess this system isn't really going to hold. This isn't really our system. It's just things that we like to say to describe a system that we would love to have. But in reality, we aren't really committed to that. Why do I say that? Because I'm looking at my leader over there and he or she clearly isn't following through. You see, the thing that people are able to pick up on is a lack of forward movement. And if we've done a really good job of explaining these are the key parts of my system and our our system working together and it's about people and we've got this great execution model and we're going to be really clear with one another and 
We're going to have a process for getting new people onboarded and whatever your system sounds like. Incidentally, I'm just borrowing elements from what I've heard from some great leaders. Those are pieces of their systems. But for example, if I say that, if I'm the leader in the room and I say, those are the key elements of my system, and then nothing happens or there's no movement, that's the thing that people pick up on. So at its most basic level, a system depends on motion. There's really no such thing as a stagnant, effective system, right? <laughs> These systems comprise key elements that are working together, that are moving together in order to drive us toward an objective, toward our vision of what we're trying to achieve, toward our goals. So people, you don't have to be a really keen observer of what's going on in a business to realize, wait a minute, we're not doing anything to act upon and follow through on this system that I just heard Matt or you know fill in the name here, that I just heard them articulate. So I guess it's not really our system. That's what people see. And they conclude, well, we must not really be committed to this system. Knowing all this, great sales leaders don't allow positive movement toward the goal to ever stop. Or I'll put this another way. They ensure that there is always progress, forward movement, that the system is moving toward the desired outcome. How do they do that? I've talked about this really simple idea of plan, do, review, plan, do, review, plan, do, review, many times on this show. If we've worked together, you've probably heard me make reference to that plan, do, review cycle in a number of different settings and scenarios. The beauty of plan, do, review is I think it captures what do great leaders do to ensure that there's always positive movement here, that not only did we plan and have a plan of attack, but we intentionally, of course, executed it and we reviewed progress. And it was in that review that we identified, hey, wait a minute, maybe we're slowing down or we're sensing a lack of momentum or wait, we didn't take the action that we needed to, to make sure that this key piece of our system continues delivering the result that we want it to. At the most tactical level, where a frontline manager is doing his or her work leading a sales team, same principle applies. If we've committed to a system together, I can use plan, do, review, plan, do, review, plan, do, review, that loop at a number of different levels, strategic all the way down to the most tactical things to ensure simply that we are taking action. We're assessing our progress reviewing and making decisions about how to continue our momentum forward. Driving great sales results is hard. Doing it consistently is even harder. There are so many obstacles that can prevent you from becoming the most effective sales leader you can be. Find practical advice you can apply right away by picking up your copy of Matt's book, The Divine Comedy of Sales, at www.divinecomedyofsales.com. So great leaders, whether they are chief sales officer or a frontline manager of a small sales team, they're focused on maintaining positive momentum, movement toward the goal. And they know if that movement forward stops, then our system fails. We can't let that happen, leaders, now can we? So if great leaders use this, what we're calling plan, do, review, this simple loop as the path, the way to ensure follow through, the way that we can ensure that our system is moving, preferably forward in the right direction, but that it's moving, then that's kind of a simple thing that you can apply to your role. If you think about, is there a key element in our system? Or maybe you're thinking about it a different way. We've got a key initiative, a huge product launch that's gonna drive our success for the next little while, or a key initiative. If it's important to the business, plan, do, review is the thing that you must have in place to ensure forward movement, follow through. Systems as senior most and executive level sales leaders have spoken about them on this show. And as they explain them to me in, you know, in the real world, in our work together, you know, they can sound sort of high-minded, people, execution model, 
clarity. These are the key elements of my system. Sure, but they always boil down to doing something pretty specific and time-based, usually a collection of specific and time-based activities. If we want forward movement, which I am telling you is the kind of the underpinning of an effective system, kind of an obvious point as I say it, but if we want forward movement, we must have this loop, plan, do, review, plan, do, review, plan, do, review. And that's a key element of what I've called the sales leader's operating system. What are the elements of the system that we're planning and doing and reviewing over time? Well, it depends on your environment, depends on what you're selling to who, what you're trying to achieve. That's why the sales leader's operating system as a framework is so sort of universal and can be applied in so many different environments. And that's exactly what I've done and my team has done in you know north of 100 places uh, organizations over the last 15 or so years. So one of the things that I've concluded over the last 15 years with this practice, with the books, the podcast interviews is as a profession and to be really narrow about it, not just the sales pr profession, but the profession of leading sales organizations as a profession, we really do need to commit not only to effective diagnosis and creating value for customers, but systems thinking. And the concept of the sales leader's operating system, not only it resonates with me clearly, right? I'm fully committed to the idea, but I want you to continue to think about and challenge yourself to answer the question, well, what's in my sales leader's operating system? Can I articulate it? And if I can, are we doing a really good job of maintaining movement through some sort of consistent rhythm, plan, do, review, for example. We are fully committed on this show to continue to give you examples, real world, of what some great sales leaders are doing to apply systems thinking to consistently drive great results from their organizations. Even when they change organizations, how are they applying systems thinking and diagnosis and all of the things that we talk about on this show, how are they doing it? We're gonna be doubling down on the idea of the sales leader's operating system. We're gonna be making some changes to the show. In the next episode that you hear from me, you're going to notice, hey, wait a minute, what's the name of the show? It's changing. You're also going to hear a couple of format changes, our branding, and just generally the messaging that you hear, especially at the beginning and the middle and the end of these episodes is going to be changing. Why? Because I want you to hear from me the steady drumbeat, systems thinking, sales leaders operating system. We have to be conscious of the rhythm that we have as an organization. I can control the results, the impact of our system simply by ensuring we've got movement forward. I'm taking very specific action to not allow the system to come to a state of, of stoppage, essentially, right? To reach a point where it's stagnant or where there is no discernible forward motion. I'm going to continue to help you think about how to do that in your environment. All that I ask is that you continue to listen in, listen to the interviews. I will continue to drop episodes like this one with my own thoughts from time to time but we really are gonna be placing heavy emphasis on uh, kind of information and the questions that you should be considering as you establish or tune your sales leader's operating system in your environment. I'm so excited to be helping you through the podcast or if we're working directly together or have, and you're thinking about re-engaging, come on back. <laughs> but so excited to be playing a role in helping you think through the application of systems thinking and some of the other really critical things that great sales leaders do to drive outstanding performance in their organizations. So thank you for being on this journey with us to this point. I will see you in a few weeks with the new messaging, the new name, the new theme of the show going forward. I hope you will join us. In the meantime, this is Matt McDarby host of the Divine Comedy of Sales podcast for now. Thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye for now. Bye.